Hello class. In this video we are going to review some of the C Sharp basics. Let's start with C Sharp organization. C Sharp is organized by namespace, class, method, and statement. A statement is a single line of code ending in a semicolon. A group of statements that solves a task can be put inside a method. A method is a reusable block of code. Methods are stored inside classes. Classes are, are stored inside namespaces. When we write our programs, any method can use any other method as long as we know the namespace, the class, and the method name. So our main method inside the program class, inside the video's namespace, is here is using the write method inside the console class inside the system namespace. The main method is a special method in our program because it defines the beginning and end of our program. Every program should have one main method. The main method begins at the opening curly brackets of the code block attached to the main method, and your, your application closes at the end of the curly brackets, at the end of the code block uh, attached to your main method. You, have, you can have many other methods containing many other statements, you can have many other classes, but all of the other code outside of the main method is only used if it is called from within the main method. Here's some basic terminology to review. So syntax refers to the rules we have to follow when we write in a programming language. C Sharp has its own set of syntax, Python has its own set of syntax, and so on. But syntax refers to the rules we follow to write our programs in a specific language. Keywords are special words that have meaning to a programming language. In the C-sharp language, some of the keywords are static, int, void, class, namespace, and there are others. Identifiers are the words that we assign to elements in our program. So when we name things like methods and variables, we name them using an identifier. Data types refer to how we store certain values in our program. Uh, all programs interact with data, with values, and the data types define what the, how those values are stored in memory. Some common data types are int, double, string, and bool. Literal values refers to the data itself, such as numbers, like 10 and negative 3.14, or printable characters, like the string high, and there are, there are other types of literal values. But when we talk about a literal value, we are talking about the data. And then variables are named storage locations for literal values. A variable is like a box that I can store a value inside. Let's remember our basic data types. Uh, the integer data type, or int data type, represents whole number values, such as 1 and 2. There are other Data, whole number data types in C-sharp. There's a short and a long, but the integer is the default whole number value in the C-sharp language. Then we have the double data type. The double data type is the default data type for holding fractional numbers. And the string is the data type we use to hold printable characters. Strings are defined with a, uh, inside a pair of double quotes. So this this is a string is a set of printable characters, spaces and all, defined inside a pair of double quotes. Let's talk about our identifier rules. When we name an element in C-sharp, we have to follow some rules. Some of the rules are, identifiers are case sensitive. So if I am creating a lowercase age variable and an uppercase age variable, those two variables are unique and um, separate from one another. Identifiers can use any character from A to Z, lowercase or uppercase, any number 0 through 9, and an underscore character. However, identifiers cannot be keywords in the C-sharp language, and identifiers cannot start with a number. Now those are the rules. There are also some conventions we should follow when we name things in our program. In C-sharp, identifiers should have descriptive names. So try to avoid using names like X, Y, Z, when instead you can use names like age, name, salary, and so on. Variables should begin with a lowercase letter. This is a convention in C Sharp. And then methods, classes, and namespaces, when we name these objects, these should begin with an uppercase letter. 
Let's talk about variables. Variables, again, hold a value. They're storage locations, like a box. To create a variable or declare a variable, the syntax is we, we pair a data type with an identifier. If I want to assign a value into this variable, we use the assignment operator, which is an equal sign. We have a literal value or expression on the right-hand side. We have our variable on the left-hand side. And this syntax stores the value on the right into the variable on the left. Now, before we can put a value in a variable, a variable must be declared. So we have to declare the variable before we can assign into it. And variables can hold changing values. So I can reassign new values into the variable at any time. So at the beginning of my program, I may store one value. And then later on, I may change that value and store another. Let's review algebraic operators and expressions. There are five basic algebraic operators in C sharp. There's a plus for addition, minus for subtraction, an asterisk for multiplication, a forward slash for division, and a percent sign for modulus. An algebraic expression combines two numeric values with one of these algebraic operators. So for example, 1 plus 2. Anywhere you have a literal value or variable, you can replace that value or variable with an algebraic expression. So here I have an example where I've declared a variable named salary, which holds double type data. And then on the next line, I'm assigning a literal value into this variable. And then on the following line, I'm showing an expression here. This is a complex expression where we go, if, if we have an expression with parentheses, we go to the innermost parentheses and we resolve this expression first. So here I'm taking some value of years, dividing it by 10, and I get a result. Then I'm going to take that value, add it to 1. I have a second expression. I'm going to resolve this value, this down to a value. Then I have a third expression, 3400 times whatever this result is. Once my expression has been resolved down to a value, I can store that value into the variable. We have to be careful when we are working with different data types. Data types want to work with, one, with it themselves. So for example, integers like to uh, work with other integers and will produce an integer. Doubles and doubles produce doubles, strings and strings produce strings. When you mix data types, it often will not work. So if I have a value stored in a string and then try to add it to an integer, I can get an error. Other times, different data types will work together, but they produce results of a specific type. So for example, if I mix an integer and a double with, in an algebraic expression, the result will always be a double. Even if the result looks like it should be the whole number 1, what will be produced is the, the double value 1.0. So what I'm going to do at the end of these reviews is give you a couple questions and see if you can answer them just to see where you are in the material. So here I have three questions and I would like you to pause the video and try them out on your own and in, in just a moment I'm going to work through these three questions um, and show you how to solve them. All right, I've pulled up Visual Studio here, and here are the questions that I, I asked. Step one, we said declare a variable that will hold an integer age value, and then next assign your age value into this variable. So if we think about we have integer age value, I'm going to create a variable. I cannot store a value until I make a variable. To declare the variable, I tie a data type, int, with a variable name, age and then I end the statement in a semicolon. I've now created a variable. Now this variable is empty. Let's assign a value into it. I'm going to say age equals uh, 42. I'm using the assignment operator to take a value, a literal value, and assign it into the variable age. All right. The next question said, declare a variable that will hold the number of years until retirement assign into this variable your, the value 66 minus your age. So we're going to use this value that we stored in our variable in the next, uh, the next expression. So first let's declare a variable that will hold the number of years until retirement. Let's make this an int as well. So I'm going to say int, we'll call this years 
until retirement. Make sure I'm, because I'm naming a variable, I'm, I'm creating an identifier that starts with a lowercase letter. All right, we've declared a variable, now let's store a value in it. I'm gonna say years until retirement is equal to 66 minus age. So here I could have put a value, but instead I, anywhere I could put a value, I can assign an expression. So I'm gonna use the value stored above to, to calculate a new value, which I will store into this variable. All right, finally, it says declare a variable that will hold the number of months until retirement. Assign into this variable the number of years until retirement times 12. So again, we're gonna use the pre a previous value to do a calculation and save the result. So let's declare this variable. This will also be an int, and I will say int months until retirement and I'm going to assign into this the years until retirement times 12. In this case I've declared the variable and I'm initializing it in one line which is allowed in C sharp. So I've created a location to store the result, I have an expression on the right hand side that will result in a literal value that I can then store into my variable. All right, hope this kind of helps get back into C-sharp.